All right, in this video, we're going to start off where we uh, left off. Uh, we just put in the fuel tanks, um, so we're going to go from there. So, um, again, this is the Stormworks Basics um, career playthrough. So, um, currently, we're in my test world, but like I said, you know, you're going to want to use, have a test world to do a lot of your building um, for your career. It makes it much easier to test things out. Um, so, we're going to continue working on our modular engines here. So we just connected up the fuel. We did two large tanks. Um, we could make a custom tank here, but um, we'll start with these. Um, next thing we do is we want to connect our air. Now, um, we're going to just kind of put some stacks going through the floor here to start with. You know, we'll we'll start to decide what kind of boat we want this to be, how we want the top decking to be once we get a little bit more advanced, but. I like to start getting these engines running as soon as possible. That's going to, um, you know, that's going to get us up and running and decide: do we even have a boat that's going to work for us? So I'm going to put some air filters on here. <clears throat> All right, so we have air, we have fuel. Next thing we need is exhaust. So I like to, um, so there are a bunch of real systems IRL for boats um, like wet exhaust, dry exhaust. Um, you know, a, a dry exhaust would be kind of like a car. It would come up and it would go out into the air here. A wet exhaust goes out into the water because it's mixed with water. Um, I think let's start with, um, let's do a wet exhaust for this. Yeah, I think a wet exhaust would be nice. All right, so we put two ports there. Let's go... Um, Exhaust. We'll do a straight exhaust here, and then we'll just pipe that to those two. Um, pipe that there, and then um, you know you don't have to put this exhaust tip. We could just put fluid ports, but I like to put the exhaust tips on like that. So there's my uh, wet exhaust. So in in real life, you really would have those going out into the water. Um, you know, they actually pump water in for cooling. <coughs> All right, so we have our uh, wet exhaust done. So let's see if we have all the components to make this engine run. So we have a starter. We have an alternator, which we won't need till later. Um, we have, let's see what else we have here. We have our exhaust. We have our fuel. We have air. So we have all the components that we need to make this uh, run. So let's uh, see if we can get it to run. So let's what we'll do here is we'll connect this up to the same controller we used for our um, our test motor here. Now, these motors are much bigger than this one, but it should work fine because all we added was cylinders. So that's the nice thing with Stormworks. You don't have to go in and re rechange your mo your uh, microcontroller if you add cylinders. So you know, say your your engine was too weak, you could add micro you could add cylinders to easily um, increase the size and the power of your engine. So let's look at this. Um, we'll actually let this engine run too while we're sitting here. Um, alternators, oh, yep, that's the um, alternator there. Um, let's see. So we'll actually, um, let's see what we want. We want air to go to air. We want fuel to go to fuel. We have starters. We have. Um, I put the seat right on, which wasn't necessarily the best thing. We don't need a radiator um, because we're using, uh, you know, water cooling coolant pump. We do need, so we're going to connect that up. Um, for uh, RPS, we actually let's just take one of our motors here. Um, We'll do this port motor, and I'll just connect the RPS. That's going to make it so this engine won't run. That's fi that's fine. Um, actually, want to let me make it. I don't want this engine running anyways. So the other thing I'll do is if I do the disconnect the starter, that won't try to start that engine. So let's see what else we need here. Uh, we have air, fuel, um, pump, alternator, starter. We need clutch and we need gear. So let's look. Um, where's the clutch hooked? Clutch is here. Where is the gear? Gear is right here. And I think we are connected. Oh, engine data. So let's go. Uh, we need this composite from the engine. 
to go to there. Um, and that should, we should be set. I think we should be set. So let's try, do, let me just double check, see what the seat was for start. Um, let me label these rudders. Throttle. Um, let's see, one. Let me see, where was my starter? Okay, let me look in the microcontroller and see which button my starter was. All right, so it is six. Six is our starter. So let me label that. And that'll start stop the engine. All right, so let's try these. Um, let me, infinite uh, electricity can be off. On, infinite fuel should be off because we don't want to, um, you know, that would give us different performance in real life. So let's do six. All right, both motors are up and running. I need to work on the idle. But let's start to increase our throttle. Okay, and something's not working there. Let me look it up. All right, let's see what's up. Let's first make sure I connected everything. That's often a mistake. If you don't connect it right, clutch pressure goes to that clutch to clutch. Coolant pump. Let me disconnect a lot of this stuff here too. Throttle. There we go. <coughs> Just trying to disconnect some of the stuff to make sure I can more easily see what things are connected to. Let me actually move my seat just so that it's not in the way interfering with me trying to get this microcontroller running. Let's just move my seat over here. All right, let's look at this microcontroller now. So let's see, we have alternators, radiators, fine, we don't need that, gear is good, um, air, RPS comes off that, fuel is going to the two fuels, um, clutches, starters, we have two starters, that's good, coolant pump, where was air, air, okay, let me just double check, make sure everything's connected properly. So air goes up through the floor, it goes to the pipes and to air filters, that's good. Fuel is going here. Let's make sure these are diesel, they are, and the fill level is 100%, they are. We um, go back, those are going directly to the fuel manifolds, that's good. <coughs> Let's see, this should run, let me see why it's not. Um, it's a clutch issue most likely, the engine's running so we're having some clutch issue. Make sure the clutches are connected. I think, yeah, I'll still do it there. We make sure this is WS, is throttle, it's sticky. We make sure that seat's connected, it is. Let's go to the microcontroller. All right, so the seat is coming down for, oh, that's why. WS doesn't control it, uh, one, two, and three do. Okay, I forgot that's how I set it up. All right. That would be why. So WS is not throttle. Uh, this is why you label things. Uh, so we'll do plus, thro plus throttle. So that was, there's nothing wrong with it. It was something wrong with me. Lower throttle and then uh, we'll do throttle idle. Okay. Now we should be able to go. I have to work on that idle, but um, we're in good shape now. All right, so six starts and stops. Start to increase the one key. All right, so we're moving. Now, as you can see, we're not going very fast and we're chugging. Now, what that's telling us is I set those to three to one. Three to one is the highest gear ratio that I can possibly put in that one gearbox. Um, that's too high. It start, it, what it's doing is it's putting a ton of resistance on our engine. Now our engine's running very efficiently, but we're doing, let me try to remember, um, this is I believe miles per hour, so, or knots rather, so we're doing 11 knots. Um, I don't have that connected up anymore. So we're doing 11 knots, 
All right, so we want to do about 30. So now let's start stepping our gearboxes back. All right, so um, actually we can do this with some math. Let's do the math and see if we can figure it out. So let's go on our microcontroller. All right, so as you can see, I have a maximum value here in my up-down counter for my throttle of 15. So the most RPS I'm going to allow these engines to give me is 15. Now, I want that as close to 7 or 8 as possible. The higher you go, it's the harder it's going to be to cool. The more fuel you're burning, the more noise you're going to have to listen to. So around 7 is good. So, you know, we're not going... So if we could do 7 RPS with these engines... Um, at a 3 to 1 gear ratio, that would give us our 30 knots. But these engines are not big enough and powerful enough. So we're going to have to go over 7. So we're going to have to burn more fuel, make a little bit more noise, make a little bit more heat. So we can go up to 15 on this engine. Um, let's. What I'm going to do is drop these down to, let's say, 9.5 gear ratio. And let's see if that's enough. All right, so we're putting less load on the um, engines. We're asking them to do less work. It's going to allow them to rev up to a higher RPS. <coughs> But it's going to burn more fuel, create more um, noise, create more heat. All right, so where are we at now? We're at 18 knots. All right, so we're getting there. So the noise isn't too high. I'm not sure what my RPS is. I should put the gauge on that. Um, we'll do that next here. Let me quickly grab it back to the workbench. Let's drag this uh, dial. Again, like I was saying, these dials are great to do a lot of view, to get quick information. And um, I just kind of broke the rule I was saying is you should make sure you label everything. Let me label everything. So let's see. RPS. And this one is speed uh, knots. All right. So let's take this and actually connect this to the RPS of our motor. All right, so now um, one thing I actually usually start with that I didn't, but let's start with it. Let's go to one-to-one -one gear ratio. So that's going to be the lowest gear ratio, and then we'll step our way up. Um, we'll reduce. Missed the jump. Okay. All right, so let's start it. Let's go full throttle. This is going to tell us if we need to make our engines bigger. Alright, so as you can see, we're actually going slower. And the reason is we're not multiplying the uh, gear ratio. We're actually hitting the rev limiter. If you look, we're hitting our rev limiter here. That's why it's doing that. So we can go more gearbox. Alright, so let's go two clicks. We'll do three, two. And let's try that. So this is the easiest way to do it is just keep stepping through it. You know, we could kind of explain how, you know, you're adding load onto the engine, which is reducing the RPS, which is then reducing the, the uh, multi multi multiplication factor of the, um, you know, the gearbox, but we won't go into all that. So now as you can see, we're doing 11 RPS. We're doing 22 knots. So by increasing that gear ratio, we're actually able to reduce our RPS and gain some speed. So we still have ample RPS, so let's increase the gear ratios again. All right, so I went out of the um, recall area because my boat's getting fast. So um, just use the map. Let's increase one click here to 9.5. I think we are on 9.5 before. Let's check it. So 3.2 look pretty good. Um, <coughs> So, uh, you know, if you hear it doing that, stuttering, that's fine. That's just tuning work. All right, so as you can see, we're starting to get where we're losing um, speed again. So 3.2 looks like the sweet spot for us. So how do you get more speed and power? You put a bigger engine in it, right? Just like Jeremy Clarkson, more power, right? So um, we're going to use a 3 to 2 gear ratio for now. So we need more power. So how do we get this easily? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Um, we're going to... Um, use our selection grid. We'll start at the uh, alternator here. We'll go to the alternator over here. We will go um, all the way up to here. We'll come all the way back to here. All right, so now these are the front heads of the motors that have all of our you know important connections and workings. We're going to take these six-cylinder straights, and we're going to make them eights. 
So we're going to cut them. We'll drag them one, two blocks ahead. We'll paste them. Okay. We're going to go ahead and we will grab the, um, let me see, we'll grab these two, um, I'll actually grab all four of them. We'll grab these four fluid ports here. We'll cut those. We'll move them forwards and connect them back to their coolant um, loops for the engine. All right. We'll go ahead and we'll fill that in with some block. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select here, here. We'll go across. And now we have two more cylinders. We're going to copy it. We'll move that ahead. And now we have two straight eights. So we've added two cylinders. So let's see if this is enough engine. So let's merge all this back together. All right, so all we've done is increase the size of the engine. Now we need to reconnect our air. So let's um, reconnect our air. And again, those air pipes are going to move eventually anyways. But as you see, everything's reconnected. We added two cylinders. So we've made the engine, um, you know, what were they, sixes? So 33% larger. All right, and now we're doing 27 knots. So I'm happy with the 27 knots. All right, now we could supercharge this engine. Maybe we'll do that later. We're not going to do it right now. But as you can see, we have a nice, um, we have a good speed. This is a great speed, um, 27 knots. But we're hitting the rev limiter. All right. We're close to that rev limiter. So let's see if we can squeeze some more speed out of this. Let's go back. We'll recall it. All right, so um, I want to get that sp speed down. Let's see if we can get more efficiency and more speed. We'll increase to 9.5. So we'll just walk up our gear ratio. So we're getting 27 knots at like 13 RPS. So there's 26, there's 27. So we're at the same speed and we've lost two RPS. All right, so 9.5 seems like that's our new good ratio. So we're pretty close to our desired speed of 30 knots. We're a little bit slow, but that's not a big deal. Um, you know, we could add more cylinders. If we wanted to go faster, we'd add more cylinders. You know, I could also make it a flat, which would be, you know, more compact, but you know, I like the engines the way they are. I like these straight eights. So we have straight eights. We could go straight tens if we wanted to go even faster. All right, but now let's think of something too, right? We're building this for career. So let's check the price. That's something you need to keep in mind. So right now we're at 9,000. We started at, I think, like 14,000. Now, I'll show you how to cheat in money if you need to. And the reason I do that is... You know, often, let's say I have a career save, I work for, you know, I play that career game for a month, and I have, you know, $2 million, and then the devs come out with natural disasters that ruin my my that particular save. Well, I will then start a new career, shut off natural disasters, and I'll cheat in the $2 million that I had so that I can stay where I was. So, you know, if you want to call that cheating, it's cheating, but I don't think it is. Um... All right, so let's actually get rid of our Stormworks Basics uh, motor. We don't need it here. All right. All right. So we have ourselves a functioning moving boat. Let's go through some quick running features of the boat. And then I think we'll end that video there and we'll move on from there. All right, so let's just quickly go tool around this boat a little bit. Six. Start to increase the throttle. So if you remember from Stormworks, the uh, basic module engine video, if you watch that, this throttle, we go forwards with one. Start to reduce it with two. And you see it gives us really nice granular control because we're, we're uh, basing it off of RPS. So as you can see, if I want to do a nice fuel efficient you know, 8 RPS, I just reduced that down. We're still doing 18 knots at 8 RPS. I can, so let's actually do a realistic uh, situation here. So we just rescued some people. And let's go over to this dock here. 
So we have a dock right here. That's actually where our main um, hospital is for our beginning stuff. And let's go dock. So remember, I set this up where one is uh, advance the throttle. If I advance the throttle, it's automatically going to clutch it. If I hit three, you know, I have to work on that, that uh, idle, but that's why it's screaming at me. But if I hit three, it will idle it and it will zero the clutch. And then if I put it in reverse by holding two, it will automatically reverse me. All right, so that's how we have this set up. So that's a really, uh, you know, functional system for uh, making this work. All right, so let's uh, quickly dock here. Next video, I'm definitely going to work on that idle light. I, um, you know, I, I did some stuff on some of my other builds to fix that idle anyways, but, um, you know, from the Stormworks base, that gets our engine up and running. All right, in six, we'll shut our engine off. And then, uh, you know, so we can easily do career with this boat. So let's, um, I'll recall this, and then we'll end this video here. And then in the next video, let's work on getting that idle fixed. Um, we have the engines the size that we want. They're installed. They're installed in the right position. Um, the boat is working well. The idle is the only thing I need to fix on that engine. Um, we will, um, I'm trying to think. Let's, um, I'm trying to think if I want to decide if I want to split those engines or not. Um, I probably will at some point. Um, I might keep this simple for career um, and not really go into some of my really detailed, realistic nonsense. Um, but um, yeah, so we'll call it here for a video. Uh, next video, we'll start to work on that idle. Thank you for watching.